Good morning. Welcome to National Stephen Lawrence Day 2021. This is our second session. We've just done a session for primary schools and now this is for secondary schools. Now you may have seen some of the media and press around this day on social media and on television as well. Um, I know that I did. Um, I've seen quite a few trailers on, on the TV. I was watching the football with my dad at the weekend. I'm a big West Ham fan. Come on, lines. Um, we lost actually at the weekend. Uh, and the trailer came up and so many big names and people that you will definitely uh, have recognised, you know, Lewis Hamilton and Sheeran, Idris Alba, and marie was there, My Jama and loads and loads of others. It's always a bit cringeworthy introducing yourself, so I apologise, uh, I'll keep it short. My name is Ben Kaji, um, I've been, I've done loads of different stuff, uh, I've worked in cancer research, worked in sport development for three years, I've worked on charity projects and business development, but the last six years I've been a presenter and broadcaster on CBBC, CBBC, uh, Pittsburgh, BBC Sport, Match of the Day, uh, radio, lots and lots of different bits. I won't talk about Mr. Tumble, I promise. Um, last year, you may have seen, particularly if you've got younger brothers and sisters, we did links about kindness and equality on CBBC and they went viral, they went massive on social media, um, newspaper, uh, press, you know, this side of, of the pond and, and in America, um, just about that ethos that everyone's welcome and it doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, what you sound like, that we should all be treated equally and, and treated with kindness. It's amazing to be asked to host this event. It came off the back of meeting Stuart at a Kindness Day uh, conversation in, in kind of November. So, you know, things have kind of gone full circle with that in terms of those two things. Why we're here. First, thanks so much for joining us. I guess you're scattered about schools across the country. You might be down in Devon or Cornwall or in parts of London. You might be in Manchester, you might be in the Midlands, you might be up north of Newcastle or something. Um, good morning. Stephen's story is both challenging and inspirational. He grew up in South East London where he lived with his parents, Neville and Dory, his brother Stuart and his sister Georgina. He was a normal young person, probably quite similar to, to many of you. He juggled spending time with his friends and family. We've all been there. You've got to juggle your schoolwork. He absolutely loved drawing. He loved running. He loved football. And he hoped to combine his talent for maths, art, and design to become an architect. Tragically, on this day, the 22nd of April in 1993, at the age of just 18, Stephen was killed in an unprovoked racist attack. He didn't know his killers, and his killers didn't know him. Now, I remember, I was six years old, uh, and I remember being in primary school at that time, and I knew about Stephen because my mum and dad sat me down. I remember seeing it on the news. Um, by that age, I'd already received racist abuse at school, I heard my younger sister, and they told me in an age-appropriate way, you know, about Stephen, his life, and his feeling. And for years afterwards, uh, my dad was was big on equality and race relations everywhere that he worked. I remember him reading the reports and being so heavily invested. I remember seeing him cry about what was happening in, in this country. Now, this killing changed the country and led to big cultural changes and attitudes towards racism, the law, and to equality in Britain. Stephen Lawrence Day is a learning experience. It's all about you. It's all about equality and inclusion for all. And today, over the next 25 minutes or so, we're going to look at the key ideas of friendship, respect, and difference. So we hope that you'll listen, you'll take some of it on board, and maybe think about some of these things and get involved. You can ask questions, and hopefully it will lead to discussions with your friends, maybe with your family, uh, and in the classrooms. Maybe you can get involved creatively as well. We'd love to see your artwork or some poetry, or if you just want to pop your notes down on some, some paper. You can also get in touch on social media. I know lots of you will have social media accounts if you're old enough. Um, and you can find all the links there in the websites as well. Now, I've mentioned them already, but I'm delighted to say that we're joined today by Baroness Dorian Lawrence, Stephen's mum and founder of the Stephen Lawrence Day Foundation, and also Stephen's brother, Stuart Lawrence. Um, it's been a treat to be able to speak to them over the last last few weeks, and I feel I feel honoured that they asked me to, to host this and entrusted me with the responsibility. Um, so, Baroness Lawrence, I'll pass over to you first. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning to all the schools and to their teachers. Um, I think I need to start off because um, if I was thinking that all the young people on today would not have been born when Stephen died, 
or the teachers would have been. And so they would have known the story about Stephen and the struggle that we had gone through in order to get justice for Stephen. Um, and I think what came out of a lot of uh, around the fight for justice was what happened within the McPherson report um, inquiry that happened. And I think what came out is how the inquiry looked, not just uh, around Stephen's murder, which is what it was, but also at institutions, the police service and the justice system, what it is that they need to do in order to change, to make, um, to make them even more equal than what they were at the time of Stephen's murder. And so I just wanted to bring that to you and to talk about the changes that Stephen's story has brought about in this country. Because Stephen's uh, um, story has changed um, within the police service, within organisations, even within government. I mean, I said, you know, there's hardly anything now that people within government are not speaking without talking about the McPherson report or about Stephen Lawrence. So it is quite a, for me, is to have Stephen's name to be in such a prominent place. And for the good, you know, we're making changes. We're changing history. One of the big history that was changed in this country was looking at, um, at the double jeopardy. Because if we didn't have that, um, there was, um, I think there was three who were brought, that we brought a private prosecution to um, back in 96. And one of them, when the judge said, um, brought a, a not guilty verdict, we were able to charge at least one of them in um, and sent to prison in 2012. So that was quite a major thing to have changed in the law was double jeopardy. So as we look forward to um, where the foundation is, we want to be a legacy of change in Stephen's name so that we can show um, people that in, it, with a positive voice, what can happen. And that's what I think I've done in the past 28 years is, is talk about the positive thing about Stephen, what he was about, what his, his likes and dislikes, and where he saw his future going. So, and that's what the foundation is all about, is another to help young people within education so we can look at our history, look at um, within our community, and also about um, careers. So we have the three Cs. So that, you know, you work through um, as a young person right through, and, and because you're part of your community, so that becomes relevant to you. How do we change our, um, the community that we live in? How do we speak out? How do we use our voices? where we need to challenge, because sometimes we have to challenge, because if we did, if I didn't challenge, I don't think I'd be sitting here today talking to you. So I had to challenge the system because it was so against people like me and families like me. So having um, a Stephen Lawrence Day is looking at the positive side of Stephen, what it is we can do in order to support each other as we, as we go towards the future. Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, Stuart, good morning. Um, how are you doing? You're on mute again, uh, you might be on Good morning, mute. everyone. So you said something important in the beginning part there, which was about listening. And I do hope this morning that I just have everyone's att attention and ears just for a little while. I just want to share a couple of things with you this morning. Uh, like I say, good morning. And, and I hope that, you know, today that can be a day to start something for all of us that is listening. And that there is a difference between listening and hearing, guys. I really want everyone to be careful and sure that, you know, listening takes an active part of your brain to process words that will be said to you, to understand what they mean and put into context, etc. Et so that's a skill, an active skill that you have to partake in. And I really want people just to do that for a moment for me, because like Mum was saying, Stephen was killed through a random attack. Yes, it was about his skin colour, but it could have been any black person on that night or on that day or on any day because that was those people's mindset. And that's what I really want people to start to think about, how our minds and how we think of other people is so important. And, you know, I'm hopeful today that for the rest of the time that we have together, you will hear how Stephen was a type of person and I was a type of person, especially at school, was very accepting of everyone. My friendship group was quite wide. You know, as long as you was a, a nice person, you, you wasn't a to me. And obviously, your friend, we could be friends. And I'd like to encourage all the young people to look at that a bit more. Yeah, you know, we all have friends, and it's great to like people who like things like you do. But I challenge everyone today to do two things. One thing is 
You know, can you do something for someone else that you don't know? You know, it doesn't have to be today. You know, it, it could be something small as opening the door for someone. It could be something as small as, you know, telling someone, do you know what, you're okay, and having a conversation with someone that's outside your friendship group. For me, because it's so important to know that it's nice to be nice to other people. That's, an, that's a nice trait to have as a person. And, and then also, like Mum was saying as well about the persistence of something. You know, again, I'm going to challenge people because to, to be great or to be good at something, it means you don't, you can't do something else. You can't all be great at everything. You know, you know, Greta Thunberg picked one thing that she wanted to make sure that she wanted to tell everyone else about, and she made that her champion thing. And we all can do that. Like Mum was saying, you know, seeking justice for Stephen was what we was striving for all those years. That's now moved on to to ensure that the legacy of us losing Stephen is a positive thing for all young people, everyone in the communities, and, and our adults can also be part of that as well. Thank you. Um, I think you touched on so many important important points there, but particularly that one about having integrity and, and, and being kind and I spoke about it in the last session I've spoken about it a lot over the last few years you don't know how far your words and your actions go and the impact that it can have in both a positive and a negative way you know something off the cuff that you might say to someone today in school which is pretty brutal you might never think about it again but they might carry that around with them for, for the rest of the day or um, the rest of the the month or the year or maybe even still be thinking about when they're my age at 34 because I know there are things that got said to me when I was in primary and secondary school that I still remember and still hurt in a way. You get over it obviously but it's still there. You still know it. And there are also kind things. You could change someone's life with a kind word. You don't know the things that are happening to them up here. What's happening in their brain, how they feel about themselves, what's happening in their family, if there's illness in the family, if there's trauma. And saying something mean and cruel to someone could just tip them over the edge. So um yeah, I think I think all of those things are so important. Um, something else, obviously, that's that's fundamental, uh, Baroness Lawrence. I'll pass over to you. Is is education? Uh, why do you think education is so important? And uh, not just in combating racism, but uh, across across life, um, combating racism and discrimination in in, in all forms. Um, for me, education, as I say, it's always been important. Um, for my children when they were growing up, I had a set, a set of things that they needed to do. Um, home from school in the evenings, I, I was one of the fortunate parents that could be at home when they get home at 3.30. So home in, um, at home, while I'm preparing our meal for, uh, evening meal, they had to go through um, spelling, telling what the words mean, so that for me, I was trying to give them the foundation of what it is that they need as they grow up. Because as we know, and unless we spend those time with our children, you know, those things never happen. And so I know there's a lot of parents who have difficulty in doing that, you know. So, um, you know, I had soft to those parents who have to be working and trying to keep um, a, a roof of their head, meals on the table and everything. But as I say, education is where once you have that, they can never take it away from you. And so I saw, and because I myself, when I was young, I wanted to go to university, but never had the opportunity to. And so when I got that, time that I could, I went back as, as a mature student. And it was much harder um, trying to cope with your family as well as studying, but because I wanted it so much. And it's also for my children to see the importance of education, what it means, you know, it can lift you out of um, whether it's poverty, um, whatever it is that you, you can use education for. And so, as I say, because and, and Steve was an academic, he was he was not somebody I needed to say, oh, don't forget you need to do this. Come and sit and do your homework. He knew what he needed to do. So and so I saw that as a way for us to grow. And you know, and like now, I'm, I so with my grandchildren, I know how important of watching them and watching them learn how important it is. But you know, you can do learning and playing at the same time. So it's not just a where you're just structured in one thing is to show them that, you know, you learn, you play. And for the foundation, we want to be able to have that structure that we can help young people to see and grow. And so they can, you know, what, whatever their ambition is, 
and they know that education can help them to get there, help, help, help them to get into whatever careers that they want. Because without having those sort of structure and those sort of foundation, I think for me, not having that, I see my children have that. I just feel that they'll be lagging behind and I don't want that. And I'm, loads of parents do not want that for their children. So it's how do we help them? And I, and I feel that the foundation is in a good position you know, to help support parents and young people in, in order to sort of, um, achieve their goal in life. Thank you. Um, obviously, we've spoken about the key themes today, being friendship, respect and difference. Why do you think those themes are so key to discuss? Well, respect, respecting each other. I think that that's quite important. Understanding differences. That is, that's, you know, because we, we, we're not all the same. You know, we all have either long hair, blonde hair, whatever. We wear different clothes. But it's, sort of, it's, um, it's to be able to respect all of that. And friendship. I mean, so we all need friends. And, you know, if you see somebody, I mean, so there's this um, advert on the TV where this child is sitting on his own on a bench and his friend walks up and he's got some um, chocolate fingers in and he shares it with his friend. And those are sort of things that we want to encourage children to do when they see somebody sitting on their own or looking a bit sad, you know, so, oh, come and play football with us, come and join in. So, you know, we just need to be able to um, show young people that friendship, respect and differences, you know, that is what we need as a foundation. And we, we just need young people to understand and um, for them to grow. Brilliant. Thank you, Stuart. Um... The world is is such a big place and uh, at times it feels like the little things that we do is does it matter is it really going to make a big difference the the example i used in the session this morning and i'll say it again now is you have a yogurt and you think oh yeah but there's no recycling bin here and it's all creamy inside i'm gonna have to find a sink i'm gonna have to wash it out i'm gonna have to dry it i'm gonna have to find recycling it's much easier just to go i'll pop that in the bin and I think on in with all kinds of issues, sometimes everyone, but especially young people, can think, "What can I do?" You know, and we've already touched on it. It might be down in in Cornwall somewhere, or up in up in uh, or wherever, and thinking, "How can I bring about change on a big level in Europe, in America, in Africa?" There's there's horrific stuff going on all over the world. What could I possibly do? What's what's your message for them? Uh, I definitely. Um... For me, that, that's, that analogy of great power comes great responsibility is such an analogy to, to view that point from. Because we are so lucky, you know, just, just look at the, the point of a yogurt pot, okay? You don't have to go through the process of making that yogurt. You, you just go through the process of, you know, being able to buy it from somewhere. It's in that convenient pot for you. You know, you just open it and you eat, consume it. So it's not much to ask for you to help to do that next part because in doing that next part, you didn't have to have the helicopter view. I, or I like to tell people about the helicopter view, which is rather than just focusing on, oh, it's going to take a bit of time and, okay, cool. What happens if I don't? You know, let this play out the sequence of, okay, it goes to the bag, it goes to landfill. Landfill then means that we have to burn rubbish sometimes. It doesn't get recycled. That has effects on the environment, which then means you know, as I look outside, there's, there's the beautiful sunny day, there's trees outside, etc., etc. You know, those things then are not there in years to come. So we've all got a little part to play where we can just do a small thing. You know, those small things that we do, I say to people all the time, you know, a small drop in the pond today is, is, the, is the tsunami wave somewhere in the ocean somewhere. We don't know how those small things that we can do will affect the bigger picture and that's what we need to try to keep in my mind that we, we may be small here but we can make a big effect you know Greta Thunberg again a, a young lady in, in in a different country decided that it was so important to tell everyone about global warming about recycling about making sure we are different than we have been and now everyone knows her name everyone knows about this plight and it just started from her doing one small act. And again, so don't don't ever feel like you can't achieve anything. Uh, and, and, you know, we all start from somewhere. But the beginning part of our race doesn't have to be where we end up. That's driven by us and our determination and our mindset, you know. So we just need, really need to be mindful that, yes, we may be young now. We may not be able to do everything that we want to do right now. 
but with small steps and small bits of progress, we can get there. You can get there. You can achieve anything. But it just takes a little bit of mindset. Again, about that word sacrifice, not doing something to do, to be great at something else. But as I said, I, I want to inspire. I want to believe that everyone, all the young people listening, can do that. Stuart, moving on from that slightly, how can young people, how can anyone challenge language or behaviour or discrimination that they see? And for me, this is easy, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to have an honest and frank conversation with everyone now about this because we are slightly a bit older, OK? So for me, first thing to say is this. Look, we all know when someone says or does something different. That's not right. We all know that. You, you, you can tell. You, you can see it. You can feel it. You can see other people's reaction when you do say something that's not quite right. And I'm asking you not to be that person. And I'm also asking others not to encourage, celebrate, you know, <laughs> those juvenile and, and those juvenile little things that we can do when we know it's not quite right. But if we were to say, do you know what, why have you done that? And question people's behavior and say to someone, that's not quite right that you said that. You know, I don't appreciate you saying, I don't appreciate you being that way. And challenge it. And I'm not in an aggressive way. I'm not asking people to start fights or be you know, shallow people. It can be challenged in such a simple way of asking someone, why? Why have you said that? Why have you behaved that way? And have a conversation with them. And sometimes in the moment, that's difficult. Because, you know, we don't want to be that person. But on a one-to-one, -one, you know, w w next time you're walking together, next time you see the person, on a one-to-one, -one, just say to them, why did you say that the other day? Because that wasn't cool. I, I remember very clearly, someone, one of my friends that, you know, I, I met from secondary school quite recently, and he said this to me, he said to me, Stuart, of all the people at school, you always accepted me for being me. It wasn't like I was, had to be good at football. It didn't mean that, you know, I had to be one of the cool kids or, you know, I had to be hard by beating up. Other. You just accepted me for being me. And that reminded me so much of what Stephen stood for. Just accepted people for who they are. Everyone, didn't matter who you are, girl, boy, young, old, just accepting people for who they are. So that's what I'd like to try and encourage. Yeah, it's brilliant. I think as as well, you know, sometimes that can be, can be quite tough. Uh, and if you're... You, you're taking that responsibility on yourself, that can be quite hard. So if there are people around you that you trust, whether they're your friends or family members or teachers or whoever that might be, if there's someone that you can talk to, I've always found that that's really helpful. Uh, now we've only got about six six minutes left and we've had loads of questions. So I'm gonna try and rattle a few, a few before before we wrap up. Um, Baroness Lawrence, there, there are quite a lot of questions about um, what changes uh, you've seen over the last uh, 28 years and whether you think that things have improved and also linked to that your hopes for the future. I've just mixed uh, three or four questions there just because we have so many. Um, can, can you comment on that at all? Um, changes. Um, I saw a mirror and um, once the, we've had the, um, the inquiry, how um, you, know, you find organisation, um, the police service, the justice system, everybody will take on board what it is that they need to do to change. And for me, that was a positive way. But to me, it just seems like there was 70 recommendations that came out of, um, out of the inquiry. And to say that we've completed all 70 of them, I would say, no, we haven't. I still think we've got a long way to go. You know, racism and uh, stuff, their times is heightened by um, whatever is happening at that particular time and what um, lets are happen from different countries that's come to here also. Um, sometimes I like to say, yes, we've made strides, which I think we have done, but have we made enough strides? I don't think so. You know, I really don't think we've made enough. Um, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. What would I like to see for the future um, is that we start to be more tolerant of each other having that respect that we need to have, respecting our differences because we're all a different. And um, society needs to change in a way in which that they reflect, of, um, you know, in the community. I mean, so if you think, think of, um, of our politician, they don't always represent us. When you look, when you look at companies, they don't always um, sort of reflect the people, say, like within London then. It doesn't, it, that reflection is not there. 
those are the things we need to see. As I think sometimes organization misses out on the talent that within um, within a black community can bring to their organization. So those are the sort of things I like to see for the future. And that's for schools. I think education, as I talk about, we need to learn our own history. I think teachers themselves need to start looking back and really look into history of this country. We heard this morning about the World War um, veterans that's been never recognized. And those are the sort of stuff that um, when people of color look at stuff like that, they think, well, we're not good enough. Why aren't we good enough? We need to remember us. So those are the sort of things I like to see when we look at the future is to understand who we are and make sure that what we are teaching our children has that reflection going forward. Brilliant, thank you. You did so well there to answer all of the questions all in one as well, so thank you. <laughs> um, Stuart, uh, uh, we've only got three minutes left, but just kind of a quick one, even though I'm sure you could talk about this for the longest, longest time. Obviously, racism is still, is still prevalent, it's still a big issue. There's a question here, what advice would you give young black teenagers who are scared to go out in the world with all of the dangers you know and, and the problems that still exist and leading into that there's another question that says if you could give a piece of advice to young people today to make the biggest difference in the world what, what would it be uh about the young black teenagers uh, walking around and feeling safe I, I think that what needs to happen there is again going back to the word about respect it comes down to that. We just need to respect each other. And again, to know and understand violence doesn't solve anything. And life is so precious. That's the one thing that I need young people to understand. Like the time that we have today together, for me, is so precious because I'm passing on hopeful messages that make a difference in your life. That will then make sure that that simple statement there about feeling safe to walk around doesn't need to be a problem because we all respect each other. And we will understand that life is precious. So hopefully that, that's an answer to that question. And about the racism and, and, and combating it and, and trying to get better around things like that. Again, like mum said, it's about education. So, so really quickly, that there, there's two sides of every coin. And at the moment, things like the, 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 the history that we're being told or being taught, even down to myself, the Spanish Armada, I remember going to watch an experience of display about that as a child. But no one told me about the tobacco or the cotton trade or the sugar trade that was one of the methods behind or the principles behind that so if we just need to make sure we tell both sides of history thank you um just to finish um we had some questions earlier about some of your favorite favorite memories or the the, the best times um with with stephen uh, Stuart, i'll start with you uh i'd say like i was saying, saying before, summer holidays you know, that those times where, you know, we were just together as, as brothers and doing stuff was, was the best times for me. And like I said, it, it, I always go, when I go around and I meet people and I see people who might have met Stephen or knew someone who knew, there's always positive stuff that they say. I, I've not met one person and say, oh, yeah, he's a bit dodgy. Like, they always say how friendly he was. They always say how polite he was. They always say how interested he was in them. And again, like I said, take some time out and not just think about their own personal friendship groups all the time, because that's easy to do. Let's look outside our friendship groups. Let's, let's speak to other people. Let's, let's give you hope by people that piece of confidence or encouragement they may need. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, Baroness Lawrence, I know it's, that's such a difficult question, um, but you answered it so beautifully um, in the primary school session. Um, what I mean, I know that today all days are, are difficult, but today obviously thinking thinking about Stephen on on the anniversary of his death. What what is it that you look back on and think of that you know those are beautiful things and that you you hold with you to this day? Um, I want to change this slightly from the primary school. So as you were talking, I was beginning to think about when he was really tiny, and I was out with him, and I used to see other parents or a mother um, have their child walking in a wall. And, and I, I, I said, you know, that's really lovely. I can't wait for when Stephen can do that. And they say to me, because he was still in his room, said to me, you don't know how lucky you are that he's still young enough to not to, to be in his plan. But um, I think for Stephen, because he was such a, he had such a really, a, this smile about him and, 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 and his whole persona, 
it was where he you know you can never be angry with him you know he's, he's a child you can never be angry when you start to have a go he just looks at you in a certain way like you just think oh right okay let's uh -huh. move on from that but you know and he could he continued to grow like that so there was nothing about him that you could ever be angry with him for very long the anger just just moved really quickly and when he said to me mom you know what your problem is you care too much because when you know I'm, I'm talking about his own safety be careful and he just said well mom i'm fine nothing's going to happen to me because i'm not doing anything you know and that's a sad thing that when you, you talk about young people being scared they don't have to do anything for things to for things to affect them yeah yeah absolutely um thank you both so much i'm so sorry that we've we've run out of time just very quickly for me to wrap up um to celebrate stephen lawrence day every school in england has been sent a pack including a personal letter from baroness dory lawrence who obviously we've had the privilege of listening to today inviting them to take part it's built around the theme live our best life and we've spoken about some of those key issues and themes today the pack is full of resources designed to provide school-aged children and young people with opportunities to learn about stephen's life and his legacy as well. Now, all of those materials have been designed, so you can use them today or tomorrow or next week, but you could use them next year and use them whenever you like. They're developed to enable schools to mark Stephen Lawrence Day, and the ambition is to build on these with further resources in the future. They're all free to download from stephenlawrenceday.org. You can find more information on the website. This will be available on YouTube, and there's more information on social media as well. Thank you so much for joining us, and a massive, massive thank you to Stuart for being with us this morning. And of course, Baroness Lawrence as well. Um, thing I'm going to say is, I'm sorry, a bit of feedback there. I'm not sure where that's coming from. But um, the last thing I, I'm going to say is, as it's been touched on today, marks the, the anniversary of, of Stephen's death. And um, if you can take time today to discuss some of these key things and key themes and, uh, and think about, about Stephen and his life and how it was tragically cut short and his legacy and the hope in the future that we can live in a world and a society that is better and more just than it has been and that it is today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And Stuart and uh, Baroness Lawrence, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.